Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Enhanced Direct Enrollment Panel. My name is Crystal Godfrey, and I have the privilege of introducing this session's keynote speaker, Dean Mose. Dean Mose is the director of the Division of Small Business and Agent Broker Innovation at CMS. He leads the agency's agent broker strategy for the individual and shop health insurance marketplaces. He's working to ensure enhanced direct enrollment meets the business needs of CMS's private sector partners, including agents and brokers, web brokers, and insurance companies. Without further ado, Dean Mose. Thank you, Crystal. And thanks everybody for um, trekking here to, to Baltimore and for all of uh, you who have registered online and who are listening to this session virtually. We really appreciate it. This is our, our first Agent Broker Summit. Hopefully we'll have more in the future, but we really do appreciate. We know that you're investing your time, uh, money uh, to be here or to, to listen to this session and the other sessions. So uh, we, we're greatly appreciative of your time today. Um, we're talking about enhanced direct enrollment. Um, let me just set this up and then I'm gonna, I wanna turn the, the mic over to our panelists. So as many of you already know, um, when working in a state um, that utilizes the federally facilitated marketplace, you have always had enrollment platform choices. Of course, there is healthcare.gov um, where you have the client log in to their, um, their account and you walk them through the application and enrollment um, process. So we're not talking about that enrollment um, option or platform um, on this panel. We are talking about the other option that you have also had available since 2013. Um, and that's where you are working with a private companies um, and you're, uh, you're enrolling the customer, the client that you're working with um, using um, a private company's website. And um, that's typically, get, typically going to be an insurance company or um, a web broker. Um, and as many of you know, um, last year we launched uh, many enhancements or improvements um, to this direct enrollment um, channel. Um, which gave approved private partners uh, the ability to significantly improve uh, both the consumer experience um, and the experience for the agent and broker community. We often refer to these new capabilities as enhanced direct enrollment. So for those of you who have never used one of these private companies, I'm hoping by the time we leave here today that you are gonna give uh, the, the second option, the second choice, um, a look this year. I think our panel members uh, may help to convince you of that. And for those of you who have never used, um, like I said, a direct enrollment uh, or private sector um, partner, keep in mind it's not an all or nothing proposition. Um, you can check out multiple um, private companies that are approved by CMS. You can use one, you can settle on one, maybe you want to use an in, uh, insurance company's website or a web broker. You can also mix and match with, with healthcare.gov, so you're not tied to one private company's um, website. So that's really important. I think a lot of people are confused by that, and so, so keep that in mind. So with us today, and I'm going to turn it over to the panel, um, we have representatives from um, two private companies. I'm going to introduce them in a little bit. We also have, and this is uh, I think equally important, we have brokers, agents and brokers on the stage here who have actually used some of these new enhanced direct enrollment um, capabilities. And I really want you to hear from them in language that you will all understand why we think uh, enhanced direct enrollment is, is um, worth trying uh, this year if you've never done that before real quickly, and this is gonna be in no particular order, so please, when I um, uh, give your little brief bio here, just raise your hand so people can see who you are. Chris Linville. Chris uh, leads the broker business unit at Get Insured. Um, he's, been licensed, he's been a licensed agent in 38 states for 10 years and registered with the marketplace since the inception back in 2013. Um, Scott. Uh, he is Scott uh, Klanowski. Klanowski? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. VP of Sales and Distribution at Health Sherpa. VP of Sales and Distribution at Health Sherpa. Thank you uh, for joining us today. 
Uh, Keith. Keith uh, Ballingall. Keith is president of Health Apply and holds an active health insurance license in New Hampshire and Maine. He has been registered with the marketplace since the beginning of fall 2013. Welcome, Keith. Um, Goshia uh, Schnecht is owner and president of Schnecht Consulting LLC. She has been a licensed agent and broker for a very long time in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And she recently has um, her health insurance license in Maryland, Delaware, Florida, and South Carolina. Welcome. Kelly. There you are, Kelly. Kelly is an independent insurance agent representing Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. Uh, she's been registered with the marketplace since uh, 2014 and has an active license in the state of North Carolina. Uh, whoops. Sorry about that. I just have a couple more. Joanne. Joanne is right there, is owner of KWS Insurance Services. Joanne has been registered with the marketplace since the ACA began in 2014. She's been a life and health agent for 16 years in New Mexico, Texas, and Kansas. Um, and then I think Veronica, that's it, right? Hi, Veronica. Has been a health plan advisor since 1998. She is the founder and president at Keystone Advisors, which um, was founded in 2014. So welcome, welcome Veronica. So uh, we have a series of questions. The, the panelists have all uh, received these questions ahead of time. The, the title of this panel is, uh, you know, what is enhanced direct enrollment and how can agents and brokers benefit from it? So I thought I'd turn it over to Scott and Chris. There's your last name, Scott. I should have seen that. <laughs> I'll turn it over to Scott and Chris. Um, who can um, help us understand uh, what uh, enhanced direct, en direct enrollment is, and then we're going to turn it over to the, to the broker sitting next to you. So why don't you start, Scott? Sounds great. Can you guys hear me okay? So uh, first and foremost, thank you, Dean Mose, to you and your team, and also to all the agents out there that are working hard and diligent in reducing the uninsured rate in the United States. We appreciate your efforts to do so. I appreciate you organize the panel as well to help us bring a little bit more information out there and disseminate information about enhanced direct enrollment. So if I may, I'll just uh, take a, a high level overview of it. And enhanced direct enrollment, as I look at it, it provides a range of custom capabilities and functionality that hasn't existed before on healthcare.gov. So it allows for agents to be able to take a consumer through the entire flow. So if a consumer drops in, they'll be able to shop for coverage. They'll be able to determine their subsidy amounts, the APTC and CSRs, if they qualify. And then they can, re they can continue the shopping experience, select the plan, uh, make the premium payment, and do all that without ever leaving the, uh, the site. So it'll stay in one consistent uh, enrollment experience. From there, too, some additional value that you would probably see as an agent is you'll be able to manage that account after the enrollment. So if there's a dependent that needs to be added to the policy, or if there's a data matching that needs to take place, you can do all that on the site without having to go into healthcare.gov. And you can also do renewals, which I'm sure we can talk a little bit more about as well. But there is a lot of functionality and capability that if I'm looking at it from an agency or an agent standpoint, it allows me to enroll more people do it more efficiently, a better consumer experience, and it helps me do that more efficiently and effectively with higher uh, conversions and higher persistency. So all in all, it's a very strong and powerful tool that helps you as agents make sure that you maintain your revenue stream, which is your client source, and it's a better member experience all the way along as well, so. Thank you, Scott. Share it. Chris, sure, I what would add you add to that? Yeah, I can add a little bit. Scott did a really wonderful job of explaining what enhanced direct enrollment is. Uh, but going further, I really think enhanced direct enrollment is an evolution of products and tools that you've needed as, as brokers and agents uh, throughout the process here for many years, things that have been lacking. In addition to just the simple, easier enrollment process uh, that's maybe a little quicker, maybe a little smoother for your clients, I think the power is really in the service tools on the, on the back end after the actual sale is completed uh, that's really going to help you, like Scott mentioned, the ability to help with documentation moving forward uh, that somebody might need to provide to the marketplace, uh, maybe providing those 1095A forms that was mentioned 
uh, earlier in another discussion that was much needed by the agents. Really the ability to, instead of having to tell your consumer, uh, hey, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to help you with that without a call into, into CMS and into healthcare.gov, enhanced direct enrollment allows partners to be able to actually give you those tools right there without that call having to be made. So overall, it's really the ability to, throughout the year, service your clients in ways you've never done it before. Yep. Excellent. Thank you both for that, um, for helping us set the stage here. So on to the, the producers, the agents and brokers we have on the stage. You all have used, um, to varying degrees, uh, some of the new features of enhanced direct enrollment. So why don't we just go down the line here. We'll start with Joanne. Just uh, talk, uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, what features of enhanced direct enrollment do you particularly like? And it's okay to repeat the same answer because you're all going to probably say many of the same things. But I'm curious, Joanne, once you start, what, what are some of the features that, that you've uh, you, you found helpful or you think are going to be pretty amazing uh, moving forward? Okay. Um, the first thing I can tell you is that it turned a one-hour appointment into a 20-minute appointment. Um, and it saves me from having to set up an account at healthcare.gov for or with the client. Um, and so we just, we are, we're able to get the information immediately from the client and enroll them through a very, it's almost the same process as we, you know, the same application you get at healthcare.gov but you go through uh, the Health Sherpa application um, and you, you put in all the information. Some cases, of course, are more complicated and you do have to go to the healthcare account to get that done. But you put in all the information and it is a miraculous event because you're not <laughs> looking for emails and usernames, passwords, security codes, identity verification, none of that. It's all completely streamlined and if your agency has a CRM system, uh, this is the system that you'll have for health insurance clients. Um, because as soon as you enter the application, the, you can hit an EDE button, a link, and it immediately will transfer to you the eligibility notice, the, any, any needs for the client, such as I need identity proof, I need proof of income, I need proof of um, residency, proof of whatever it might be, uh, a special enrollment, loss of coverage. And so you see all the documents that are necessary and um, within minutes you can download or upload those documents and the client's policy, you've already pre-selected and put into a cart the plan that the client needs and you've already given them an idea of what the tax credit, if any, would be. and you can now even do the dental at the same time. But within minutes, the application's complete, and they're enrolled. Great, thank you for that. Um, you did happen to mention one company. I want to point out that on uh, the Agent Broker Resources page, um, we do have um, uh, a new directory where, where you can find out um, all the different capabilities of all the companies that offer direct enrollment and enhanced direct enrollment. So that's being projected on the screen as we speak. You go to the Agent Broker Resources page, and there's a quick link. It's read there. It's the top one. It's called the Partner Directory for Agents and Brokers, and that's where you can find out which partners are live in your particular um, state uh, that, that you uh, are licensed in uh, and are enrolling consumers in. So thanks for that, Joanne. Uh, let's move on to Veronica. Um, what would you add or highlight? Uh, dashboard. Uh, this is an ability for you to monitor all your clients, any prospects that you've talked to, to see where they stand, if they've looked at the plan, if they've enrolled, uh, the ability to find out um, if they're missing documents. Uh, so this is a good way for you to manage from the beginning to the end. Uh, for the renewal option, uh, I will tell you the EDE feature is outstanding. You can upload your book of business from whatever carrier you may have uh, your ACA book. Into, the, into your EDE platform, and it'll be a bulk email notification to your clients to renew. So uh, this is just a highlight of some of the features that works well for my team, myself, and our clients love it because it's a good way for them to utilize um, their account update, add any additional dependents, and we're notified immediately. Thank you for that. Um, gosh, yeah, uh, what uh, several features did, did you find helpful this year? One of the 
the best things that I always uh, like to use it for is if somebody calls, calls me new for insurance, you can actually search healthcare.gov very easily if they've in the past submitted an application. So it even streamlines it further where you don't have to ask them for the social security numbers. You just basically verify the information and many times the application is pretty much complete and then it just downloads down to the, um, uh, to your information and you have it as a client. Uh, it's a great way to keep your clients and you see which clients are active, who's currently enrolled, uh, you see anything that's going on with, with, wrong with a client, you can pull up all their documents. It's a fabulous tool. So much easier, so much faster. You can enroll people, like, like it was mentioned, you enroll them so much. Uh, I've only had one person I had a verification. Mm -hmm. I actually had to go through asking mm -hmm. all the, uh, but in most cases you will not have to go through any verifications no, and, and it's just the setup and the, con the control that you have over your clients is just amazing. So much easier. Thank you for that. Kelly and Keith, anything that um, you would add at this point? Yeah, um, hope you can hear me. <laughs> I just think it's an amazing um, tool and it's advanced um, the ability to process and keep customers happy for not waiting in a very busy time during open enrollment and after. But the one thing I wanted to add is I'm in a, with an online agency. Um, I don't have people coming into my office generally, but a consumer can get a link and enroll themselves, that it's attached to you. So they can, um, if you ha send, some people just don't want to deal with an agent or they feel like they can handle the online, feel, makes them feel more comfortable. So one thing I want to add to all of this is just that the fact that there is a direct enroll um, part of this where they can actually enroll themselves. It will show up on your dashboard and then you can follow up with them because they used your link and make sure they get their documents and things in on time. So that's all I want to add. Keith, last but not least. <laughs> Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm excited to see what the other web broker entities may bring to the table. I know we're right at the very beginning, but there's more coming. So I'm anxious to see what they bring. Um, a lot of us spend so much time enrolling consumers. I think the biggest thing I'm hoping that we see out of this is the ability to then keep consumers enrolled. The pieces where notifications go to consumers, but we don't know and we miss it. I think this is where our biggest opportunity lies um, because we spent so much time to get them in. I think this is just going to help us keep them in. And, and Randy did point that out today that we do have some of those communication um, um, enhancements, if you will, um, being rolled out to the partners. And um, it's, a very, it's an excellent point. We are just at the beginning. We're just starting to roll out these capabilities. And as I mentioned, this list that you can um, reference here, uh, the, the directory is going to continually grow and evolve over time. So I'd, I'd invite you to you know, check out this list and see um, who gets added um, over time as we get closer to uh, open enrollment. So I'm going to move back over to um, Scott and Chris. Um, because um, uh, enhanced direct enrollment does not always uh, involve a redirect to and from healthcare.gov, in some cases it still will, um, how might the online applications, Chris, I'm going to have you do this one first, how might the online applications of approved companies look and feel different than, than what's on healthcare.gov? Sure. So in the past with the double redirect, uh, especially in a consumer-driven enrollment, uh, what we would see happen is that consumers would start the process on a partner's website, maybe see a great shopping experience, and then have to actually redirect over to the marketplace, in which case what we always saw was a big drop-off at that point because the consumer, one, got confused with what they needed to do and then the fact that they also needed to direct back to the partner to be able to complete the process, but also that there was a different look and feel completely. These two websites didn't look like each other. They felt completely different and it was a jarring experience, right? So what enhanced direct enrollment allows us to do is, in addition to all of the extra service tools that we can provide, it allows us to be able to provide a single site enrollment where the consumer, from start to finish, feels like they're on the same website because they are. They're not moving around, they're not going to different uh, websites and they no longer have that jarring experience. So you would have the exact same thing from start to finish. Uh, now that's obviously from a consumer uh, driven view which it's definitely gonna help. Now from you guys as uh, agents, it helps you too. You know, From the standpoint that you're also going to have the exact same uh, 
exact same process through from beginning to end. It's going to look the same. You're not going to have to worry about additional logins uh, over at healthcare.gov like you currently do with the double redirect process. Um, you're, you just don't have to deal with any of that. So it's going to be a much smoother process. Yep. Chris Scott, what, uh, what would you add? Yeah, just uh, a little bit on the actual flow of it as well. So uh, as Chris mentioned, you'll stay on one site. You don't have to jump all over. But the optimization of the enrollment flow itself, so the user experience and the exchange with that website has also been optimized. So you will have less duplicative questions like you have on healthcare.gov. That's been removed. Uh, you'll click through less screens, so that enrollment process is much quicker. So we've heard a few of the agents also mention how quickly they can move through an application. Uh, some data, if you look at it, between enhanced direct enrollment and double redirect, you'll see about, it takes about a third of the time to do enhanced direct enrollment that it does for a double redirect client. So from a efficiency scale, when you're getting around your deadline dates towards the end of the, the month and the open enrollment period, and you got the lines banking and, and packing up, you can get a lot more clients through using enhanced direct enrollment than you can with the double redirect. So from an agency standpoint, again, it helps you be more efficient with what you have and have a better user experience all the way through. So very powerful tools at your disposal, and we're excited about that. Great. Thank you, Scott and Chris. Uh, back to the producers, agents and brokers. So as I mentioned uh, in my opening remarks, uh, it's not an all or nothing proposition. You all have choices. Uh, when deciding what platform to use when enrolling your customers and managing um, their, your, your accounts uh, with them. Uh, based on the data that we looked at, you know, brokers are doing exactly what I said. They're picking and choosing different partners. Sometimes they're going, sometimes they're using healthcare.gov, sometimes they're using a private partner, sometimes they're going directly to a carrier. I'm curious how you make those determinations because I'm a little bit puzzled why people make the decisions uh, they do. Because as I mentioned, you don't have to stick with one partner. You can, you can move around and test, test out the water. So Keith, I'm going to start with you, if you wouldn't mind, so that you, you don't, you're not the last one this time, and we'll just, we'll just go down the line. All right, thank you. Um, so for us, uh, we almost exclusively have been using some kind of a double redirect process from um, many of the web broker entities, actually. Um, Part of the theory for us is I never know and I never want to count on when we have just six weeks to work one particular web broker entity. So we'll have relationships with multiple. Um, we have been testing out uh, the new enhanced direct enrollment, um, but thus far for me it's felt a little comfortable knowing I can go back to what I know. Um, but I fully expect um, we're probably going to make a big leap here, especially with the time consideration. Kelly, how do you make that decision? I, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> um, I try to exclusively use the, um, the system that takes me, um, oh, you can hear. I try to avoid um, going to the redirect to the marketplace or to call the marketplace because I, I have all the tools I need with the system in place with the EDE. Um, but my first attempt is always there. Unless someone calls me and says, something like this, like my grandmother's my dependent, sometimes it throws it out as it won't, it, it automatically calls them a child or something like that. Something typically that doesn't give me the response I need, I then go to the redirect and go straight to the marketplace and try it and sort it out that way. Um, or if someone's calling me, and typically this is after the um, open enrollment's over and they're trying to produce documents or IRS documents, tax documents, then that's something, if there's an issue, we call the marketplace. But other than that, ADE has been primarily the success story for us, and that makes sense to use it all the time. Veronica, um, why don't you uh, take it away? So uh, with every client that we assist, we use the EDE um, enhancement. Uh, so uh, very seldom do we have to call and use a, you know, telephonic assistance from the call center, such as a child-only policy, but uh, everything is uh, able to be processed through the EDE at, the, at this time. Um, Joanne? I'll go ahead and use this mic. Uh, um, yeah, so how do you make that, uh, that decision? Yeah, there, there could be some complicated um, cases. And um, 
So the first thing that I would look at is uh, how they get their earned income. If it comes to them by W-2 at the end of the year or 1099, um, sometimes self-employed individuals' cases are a little bit more complicated. Uh, and I also ask if all of their dependents are listed on their taxes. Um, because if you've got kids that are living with other parents halfway through the year, those cases can get complicated. And so sometimes you have to go to the marketplace for that. I also do a search, and you can do it with the EDE process. Um, you search for uh, a, an application that's already available that they've already started. Sometimes three applications show up. <laughs> Um, sometimes they've got ones that's, that are half done, ones that um, are a mess, and you've just got to start from scratch. Sometimes you have to completely delete those apps and start fresh. And um, so as far as um, being able to go through the ED pass or, or the uh, EDE enhanced enrollment area, I think it... Um, Oftentimes, you can ask just a couple of simple questions, and if you think it's going to get complicated, if they already have an account at healthcare.gov, sometimes you start there. And uh, you'll have the client log into their account, and, uh, you know, the other thing is before dental was available through the enhanced direct um, pathway, we had to go on to the marketplace also with the client and see if... Um, we could find out, you know, if we could cancel a dental and enroll in a different plan or do what needed to be done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I, I didn't realize um, we were going to shine the spotlight on you as much as we are today. Uh, sorry about that. I think they're, I think they're trying to uh, adjust that. Um, so actually, Scott, I'm going to turn the mic back to you, if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, so as everybody knows, uh, we're outside of the open enrollment period uh, right now. Uh, you know, can you describe some scenarios in which um, the producer community agents and brokers can now assist consumers directly um, using enhanced direct, direct enrollment tools and services? I mean, I think the big thing that I'm hearing on the stage here, it's not just I mean, we're, we're struggling internally about what to call this uh, because uh, we're calling it an enhanced direct enrollment because we've always called it direct enrollment. Well, now it's enhanced to make the point that it's better than direct enrollment. But it's not just about enrollment, and that's what I'm hearing today. It's much more than getting people through the application and getting them enrolled. It's much, much bigger than that. So, um, and we are outside of uh, open enrollment, obviously. So what can the producer community agents and brokers do um, outside of open enrollment and, and talk a little bit about or reemphasize the benefits of enhanced direct enrollment outside of um, open enrollment? Sure. Some of these apply regardless of the time, but the, there's been a couple of remarks around 1095s. So when your clients toward the end of the year are looking to get their taxes filed and they need that uh, difficult form to find, the 1095, you can simply, through enhanced direct enrollment and that account, you can log into the account, pull off the 1095. The consumer can do it themselves. It's readily available at their fingertips. So a lot of the information that's available uh, on enhanced direct enrollment puts that in a much more easier and convenient place to access. So that's one thing. Uh, as you enroll your clients, uh, you'll run into the DMIs, the data matching issues. Um, that's historically been something that can be a little bit difficult. So on enhanced direct enrollment, you can go in as you're assisting that consumer. Uh, if they have a DMI, and you will know that because it will let you know, uh, give you the alert, then you can pull that information and upload the documentation right into the enhanced direct, thank you, the enhanced direct enrollment site. <laughs> so, there's a lot of power that is coming to you and at your fingertips, not only from the, the agent assisting a consumer, but helping the consumer self-assist themselves. So that helps you be more effective as well because you can move into enrolling more clientele. And there was one comment around um, some of the marketing efforts, and I'd like to just touch base maybe a little bit on that if you'll, if you'll humor me here. But if you think of the double redirect, that is where a consumer came on, they started the shopping experience, and then was redirected out. 
Uh, at that point, historically, on a double redirect, you lose all perspective on that consumer. With enhanced direct enrollment, that transition never happens. So when you think about lead nurturing or keeping that lead in your life cycle and that enrollment process, with enhanced direct enrollment, because they don't leave, you can keep tabs on what's going on with that member throughout the entire enrollment process. So think of the power as you're investing money into marketing initiatives and campaigns where you could take that consumer through one consistent flow. And let's say like happens to everyone, you start an application and then something comes up. So then your consumer has to go take care of the fire that's burning right then. Well, you can bring them back and drop them right into the flow where they left without losing any of the information that they input. So your lead nurturing goes from you know, all the way through that process in a seamless way, where it's just that was not able to happen on double redirect. So there's a lot more persistency that you'll see out of that consumer base. So there's a, those and a lot of other power. I, I like how you're talking about the, the naming convention. Don't just go off the naming alone. It is a lot more than enhanced direct enrollment. It's more than just that enrollment process. It's the management of the member. Yeah, Chris, sure. uh, please feel free to add to yeah, that. Yeah, I can add a little bit here. And uh, Scott, is, as uh, he did before, stole my thunder a little bit. So, you know, pointed out some really great things that you can do outside of open enrollment, right? So you know, obviously the 1095s we've discussed at length. We've also discussed the ability to help with documentation. You know, additionally, with enhanced direct enrollment, you can uh, help your folks with uh, SEPs throughout the year. So maybe somebody needs to change their address. You can do that for them, you know, help them with that. Maybe you need to, you know, we had some folks talk earlier about having to change and add um, job information throughout the year. You can do things like that. Essentially, anything that you can typically do uh, on healthcare.gov uh, or through the call center by calling in and make these changes throughout the year, you would be able to do through an enhanced direct enrollment uh, solution. You know, when, when Dean talks about what do we call this thing, right? What do, do we call it enhanced direct enrollment? And that made a lot of sense because it was the enhanced version, right? You know, around our offices, we like to call it marketplace as a service, you know, because essentially you as brokers would be able to utilize these tools just the same as the call center at the marketplace would be able to, to really help your clients with anything they need throughout the year. Yep. That's a name we'll have to consider. Thank you, uh, uh, Chris. So I'm going to turn the, the mic back over to all of uh, our, our producer community, the agents and brokers. Um, you know, basically, I, my objective for this panel was to describe what enhanced direct enrollment is. And I think um, you can all agree we have a, at least a better sense of what um, enhanced direct enrollment is and what those new capabilities are. I just want to remind everybody that, again, go back to this. This, this directory, uh, that list is going to continually grow. Um, we have partners in the queue, um, and we, we know that we're going to have more partners live um, uh, as we get closer to um, the start of open enrollment um, this year. Um, and so you'll be able to identify you know, by state which, which partner um, is available. Keep in mind that this directory also lets you know which partners are just on healthcare.gov, those that are doing the double redirect, and for those that are doing double redirect, whether or not they support, um, you know, change in circumstances um, outside of open enrollment. So all of that information is on this site. We're trying to make it, um, we're trying to enhance the, the look and feel of it for this open enrollment, but it's really a powerful tool, and I uh, encourage you to, uh, to check it out to see uh, what, um, what private partners are out there and which ones you might want to work with. So. Back to the agents and brokers. I, uh, my, my objective was to um, get those people who have never used um, direct enrollment and now enhanced direct enrollment to um, consider using uh, this, this new platform um, this year for this open enrollment. So um, I know the numbers. Um, I won't share those with you, but I know that there are some brokers are out there who have never um, used a private partner to enroll a customer in marketplace coverage. So, you know, to close things out for each of the brokers and spend a little time on this, um, for those brokers who have never used one of these private companies to enroll consumers in, marketplace, in a marketplace plan, why should they consider 
giving direct enrollment and enhanced direct enrollment a try this year. I'd like each of you to, to, um, to answer um, that question. I mean, you're all, you've all drunk the Kool-Aid, but um, for those that haven't, um, how, how, would you, how would you pitch that? Um, why don't we just start here and, and go down the line? Joanna, is, Joanna, are you ready or? Microphone on, yeah, sure. Um, I, I don't like issues because they require therapy. And so when you're working with your clients, what I like are to be ahead of a problem and kind of solve it before any problems come into play. And this is a time saver and you're able to monitor what needs to be done for your clients. And um, I think I'll go ahead and let Veronica now. Oh, just asking you to move your mic a little bit closer, uh, little just so closer. people can hear you. All Feel right. free to continue. Okay. Um, so yeah, the time consuming factor, the good quality customer care, um, and the ability to treat people um, how they like to be treated, that's really important. All right. So as brokers, we are always looking to grow our book of business, to retain our book of business, and this is a really good solution for each and every one of you. I will tell you that the customer experience is outstanding. Uh, we also get a lot of referrals because we are able to help people process an enrollment within 15 to 20 minutes. And we all know that we have a lot of procrastinators, people that wait a long time, and they all come in at the 11th hour where we don't have enough minutes or hours in the day. And uh, having the ability to send a link and having the client process their enrollment, it's going to give you an ability to also grow your book of business and manage that very well. Uh, Gosh, yeah. Using enhanced enrollment by far simplifies the entire process. It is the easiest process to use. And the fact that you are able to view your clients at all times on, on healthcare.gov, you, once you submit the application, you don't ever see it again unless you're logging in with the client again. So this is absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing technology. Everybody should use it. It's so much easier. Go ahead, Kelly. And I guess probably many of you have been on the um, marketplace since its inception, and I just remember the first months when it was down and we were all struggling to explain to our customers mm -hmm. and get them to understand and learn to trust you despite you know not being able to be successful getting them enrolled. Mm -hmm. And then it continued with some other issues that have come up over the years, but when we first started using the, it was the redirect, um, it became a lot clearer for people. It just seemed to increase the ability for the customer to trust that you knew what you were doing because they don't see your screen necessarily. Sometimes we use screen share, but for me, I'm an online agent, and um, so you're talking with a customer on the phone, and just over the period of time, I think the most effective thing is that customer trust that's increased for us, and, and they refer, like you guys have said, and hey, I might, it took me two hours on the marketplace, can you help me? And yeah, I can help you, and you go through the EDE, and it's just amazing, and that gets you referrals, so I think that's effective. I'm actually going to jump on um, Veronica's point. Um, we often look at this as two types of consumers. The consumer that goes direct and wants to do everything themselves, and then the consumer that really wants us to do everything for them. And there, there is a group of consumers that is somewhere in the middle. And last night I actually had one of these exact examples where it was a consumer I started working with, sent them the link, look at, you know, look at these plans, see what you think. I was not able to get back in touch with her. Today was literally the deadline for her plan to start. And at 10 o'clock last night, I got an email that she did it. And then on my end, I saw that she enrolled. I can send a quick follow-up email relative to getting in a loss of coverage letter. And for that consumer that kind of wants to be on their own, but wants to know somebody's there backing them up, them up and, and is there for them, this is a perfect scenario. Thank you. So we're running just a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, is there anything that um, you know you would you would like to add that you you wish you would have um, added um, in your your previous responses? Does anybody have anything that um, they they just wish? Oh, I wish I would have said that. Um, and somebody else, you know, go ahead, Kelly. I'll be brief, but. Um, just one thing in this period of the year when people may have delayed filing their taxes or there may be lack of communication between the IRS 
and the uh, marketplace, and a lot of you know what I'm talking about, um, they get a surprise where they're losing their um, subsidies and they're getting ready, they get on the phone with you and you're confused. I go to their application on um, the system we use and it says, there's a button there that says, I have permission because I've talked on the phone with this customer, so I click yes and then I can get the document information back. It shows me their new eligibility letter, which I've never seen, but then I open it up and I can see that it's the 8962 tax form or they, um, they haven't filed their 2017 taxes and right away you can tell them what's going on with all, all this other mystery and then, of course, their um, application has to get fixed later, you know, if, if you don't catch it now. So, And they, then they can solve their issues or if there was an issue, they can get an exception or whatever they need to do with Marketplace. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Scott. Scott, share it, everyone. <laughs> yeah. the, um, just a thought around the renewals. If we were to just talk about renewals, and it, it, that takes a lot of time, and obviously you have a 45-day window, you're trying to maximize your enrollment, so you want to retain your book, but also get on to growing that book. So enhanced direct enrollment gives you a lot of tools in order to help you accomplish just that goal. Your, your renewal applications, you can get a lot of that as a pre-populated app so that you spend less time in administrative keying in information. You can also email that out to your client so that they can complete the app if they feel competent to do that. So there are a lot of tools as you look at, I think we've looked at a lot of stats around 80% of the renewals or 80% of the enrollments are renewals every year. So as you're looking at that and considering, man, I need to work through that much quicker so I can get into the enrolling of new clientele and expanding my book, this gives you the tools, functionality, and capability in order to do so. And then just a lot of power in the marketing where you can see that full aspect of the member from beginning to end. So it's a, it's a very powerful tool. I think one, if I, I, I'm a stat nerd, so I'll just throw a couple others out there, but most consumers, uh, about 30% take more than one engagement in order to complete the enrollment. So there's a lot with that lead nurturing through that process that can help you through that to maximize your efficiencies. So, uh, and the payment options as well. So your effectuation rates uh, will also uh, go up by using enhanced direct enrollment because you will be able to fully integrate into the payment schemes. So lots of power in there. Thank you, Scott. Uh, anyone else? Great. I, uh, I just want to thank um, all of our panelists um, for, for coming in today. We did not pay for them to come here. We didn't fly them in. They did this um, because they are excited about these new capabilities and we, we um, you know, they wanted to, to share their, their experiences um, with all of you. Again, I think um, it was Keith who said it, you know, we are just getting started. We, you know, we're the enhanced direct enrollment or whatever we end up calling it um, is, is, just, uh, is just getting started. We launched it actually during open enrollment um, last year. Um, we, have, uh, we have, you know, other partners in the queue. Um, we're going to be adding them um, as we approach open enrollment. So I really, uh, again, uh, if you haven't ever used uh, one of our private partners, companies, to enroll somebody in a marketplace plan, just give it a shot. You, you know, one or two, three, just give it a shot, see how you like it, test out several partners to see which functionalities and capabilities you like, um, and then make a decision how you want to um, enroll your customers um, this open en enrollment period. Again, I said it at the beginning, I'll just remind everybody you're not locked into one particular partner or one particular enrollment channel. You can use a mix of healthcare.gov or um, one of our uh, private partners. So, um, you know, check it out. Um, we think it's, it's pretty fantastic. And also stay in touch with us because we are, we are improving that, uh, just like we're including, uh, improving healthcare.gov, we are also um, improving our enhanced direct enrollment capabilities. So this is just the beginning of an evolution and we're gonna be um, providing more um, um, capabilities um, throughout the year. So, um, so, you know, make sure you're staying in touch with us. Uh, we will be rolling out additional features and capabilities um, over the next several years. Let's give our panelists um, a big round of applause. 
and um, I think if they wouldn't mind, uh, maybe we'll just gather around down down here, and if people have questions they wanted to ask, we didn't. This wasn't a live Q and A session, but if you want to come up and ask them questions, I mean, feel free to to come up here, and you can ask them questions. Also, this is an opportunity um, to visit some of um, some of the um, partners that we have um, out in the the hallway. Feel free to to visit uh, their tables, um, and again go to this website and um, watch the list grow as we get closer to open enrollment. Thanks again for attending, and I believe our next session starts uh, at, I think it's 2 o'clock. So make sure to come back. We have a, an agent broker panel that's going to be facilitated by Lisa Wilson. So make sure to come back um, for that. That one's uh, going to be a really amazing panel as well. Thanks again. Oh,